As temperatures drop and winter grips the country, the less fortunate in South Africa are preparing for the harsh realities that this season brings. Africa Muslims agencies on the ground distributing blankets, clothing and other essentials to thousands across the country. Sponsor a winter warmth pack for 280 rands to provide blankets, winter clothing and candles to families in need. Donate via Africa Muslims Agency and help us to spread warmth this winter. Africa Muslims Agency, commemorating 35 years of empowering, educating, inspiring. إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم جميع لدينا محضرون فاليوم لا تظلم نفس شيئا ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في ظلال على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام قولا من رب رحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أعهد إليكم يا بني آدم ألا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وأن اعبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أضل منكم جبلا كثيرا أفلم تكونوا تعقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم توعدون يصلوها اليوم بما كنتم تكفرون اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لطمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبصرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ومن نعمره ننكسه في الخلق أفلا يعقلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينذر من كان حيا ويحق القول على الكافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم من ما عملت أيدينا أنعاما فهم لها مالكون وذللناها لكم وذللناها لهم فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يأكلون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينصرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محضرون فلا يحزنك قولهم 
إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون أولم ير الإنسان أنا خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي العظام وهي رمين قل يحييها الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور الذي خلق سبع سماوات طباقا ما ترى في خلق الرحمن من تفاوت أرجع البصر هل ترى من فطور ثم أرجع البصر كرتين ينقلب إليك البصر خاسئا وهو حسير ولقد زينا السماء الدنيا بمصابيح وجعلناها رجوما للشياطين وجعلناها رجوما للشياطين وأعتدنا لهم عذاب السعير وللذين كفروا بربهم عذاب جهنم وبئس المصير إذا ألقوا فيها سمعوا لها شهيقا وهي تفور تكاد تميز من الغيظ كلما ألقي فيها فوج سألهم خزنتها ألم يأتكم نذير قالوا بلى قد جاءنا نذير فكذبنا وقلنا ما جاء وقلنا ما نزل الله من شيء إن أنتم إلا في ضلال كبير وقالوا لو كنا نسمع أو نعقل ما كنا في أصحاب السعير فاعترفوا بذنبهم فسحقا لأصحاب السعير إن الذين يخشون ربهم بالغيب لهم مغفرة وأجر كبير وأسروا قولكم أو جهروا به إنه عليم بذات الصدور ألا يعلم من خلق وهو اللطيف الخبير هو الذي جعل لكم الأرض ذلولا فامشوا في مناكبها وكلوا من رزقه وإليه النشور أأمنتم من في السماء أن يخسف بكم الأرض فإذا هي تمور أم أمنتم من في السماء أن يرسل عليكم حاصبا فستعلمون كيف نذير ولقد كذب الذين من قبلهم فكيف كان نكير أولم يروا إلى الطير فوقهم صافات ويقبض ما يمسكهن إلا الرحمن إنه بكل شيء بصير 
أمن هذا الذي هو جند لكم ينصركم من دون الرحمن إن الكافرون إلا في غرور أمن هذا الذي يرزقكم إن أمسك رزقه بل لجوا في عتو ونفور أفمن يمشي مكبا على وجهه أهدا أمن يمشي أمن يمشي سويا على صراط مستقيم قل هو الذي أنشأكم وجعل لكم السمع والأبصار والأفئدة قليلا ما تشكرون قل هو الذي ذرأكم في الأرض وإليه تحشرون ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين قل إن ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين قل إنما العلم عند الله وإنما أنا نذير مبين فلما رأوه زلفة سيئت وجوه الذين كفروا وقيل هذا الذي كنتم به تدعون قل أرأيتم إن أهلك لي الله ومن معي أو رحمنا فمن يجير الكافرين من عذاب أليم قل هو الرحمن آمنا به وعليه توكلنا فستعلمون من هو في ضلال مبين قل أرأيتم إن أصبح ماءكم غورا فمن يأتيكم بماء معين صدق الله العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما ديال بلاد جماعة المسلمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله on this very auspicious and beautiful day of جمعة it gives me great pleasure indeed to present you our speaker for today who is no stranger to Masjid Al-Quds whatsoever and who really needs no formal introductions, the Honorable Sheikh Muhammad Murad uh, to address us. فَلَيْتَفَضَّلْ مَشْكُورَ يَا فَضِيلَةَ الشَّيْخِ First of all, allow me to say Jazakumullah khairan to the Imam. As you can see, he didn't even give me a chance to relax. So I will have to relax in front of the mic today. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. My dear brothers and sisters, allow me to greet you with a wonderful greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. 
As you would have noticed, the topic under discussion today would be the prophecies of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Something that we seldom take note of. And at the beginning, allow me to say, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not the fortune teller as we would know it. He didn't have a crystal ball that is going to look in and tell us our future. He did not look in a cup of tea and say, this is what's going to happen to you tomorrow. He didn't look at the newspaper and say, but this is what your stars say, what's going to happen to you. مَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ doesn't speak out of his own wombs and fancies. It is but divine inspiration that he tells us, that he was able to tell us what would happen to us and how the time will evolve and how we will live in the future. All praise, thanks and gratitude is due to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we seek refuge in Allah, we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from our own souls, and the shortcomings, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and to forgive us and to protect us. Surely whom Allah guides, nobody can mislead. And those who mislead themselves, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who can guide. We bear witness and testify that no one is worthy of worship besides Allah. And we also bear witness and testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is indeed the servant, slave, and messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's choicest peace, blessings, salutations, love, and compassion on our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, his family and friends, and those who follow in their guidance until the day of judgment. I ask this question. The month of Rabi' al Awwal have come and gone. We have celebrated Mawlud after Mawlud after Mawlud. We have dressed in the most beautiful of garbs. We elevated and we praised Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The month of Rabi' al Awwal regarded as the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is the pinnacle of our Islam. But also, we ask ourselves, what now? What now? We have sang the praises of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but where is the ittiba'? We have demonstrated our love in that particular manner, nothing wrong. But again, we can demonstrate our love even better if we start following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, in the book of Tirmidhi, the book of Bukhari, an Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala an, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yakti ala nasi zamanun as-sabiru fihim ala dinihi kal-qabidh ala al-jabr. Or كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم. Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says the time will come and dawn upon mankind when the patient and the persevering person on his way of life, on his deen, it will be like holding onto a hot coal. Very simple to understand. Very simple. Holding onto a hot coal is difficult. What would be the cause of that? We're living in a time we have so many distractions. We're living in a time where we are all being diverted from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are taken away from the true path of Allah. There is so many influences around us that impacts on our mind and our way of life and our hearts and the way we think that to hold on to your deen becomes difficult. It is not just a matter of holding on to a hot coal. It becomes difficult to hold on to your deen. We are here in the masjid. We are in an atmosphere of our deen. We are in an atmosphere of salah, of, 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 of dhikrullah, of listening to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the moment we step out there, 
we will find those influences will hit us in the face. We go home, you find those influences right around us. From your television, from your media, everything is impacting on our lives. It is difficult to hold on. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, the time will come when a man, when he is walking past the qabr of another man, he would desire that he is inside the qabr and not outside the qabr. We do not wish to die. But when calamity hits our deen, and we find it difficult to live under those circumstances, that's a time when there is a desire. And we say to ourselves, rather, let me not be in this environment, I would rather be in the qabr. And when I say the ittiba' of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, following of the Prophet, don't we think, if we analyze our situation in this world today and how we are living, it is time that we have to exert ourselves on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make that jihad. This is a jihad, no doubt about it. A jihad on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jihad to stay on the path of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A jihad to follow the Holy Quran by executing its commands, by abstaining from what the Quran forbids. We cannot and we must not fall prey to the rejectors of faith. Those who took their religion and still today take their religion as amusement and mockery. We cannot follow in that trend where we will fall in that category as taking our religion as amusement and a mockery. Why not? This is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Firstly, the Almighty Allah speaks to us as believers. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, la tattakhidhu alladhina attakhadhu deenakum huzuan wa la'iba. Min alladhina utu al-kitab, wal kuffara awliya. Don't take those, those who had the book before you, meaning the Jews and the Christians, and those who rejected the monotheistic belief in Allah. Don't take them as the awliya and follow their pattern because they took their deen as huzuan wa la'iba. Huzuan wa la'iba mean that they took it as amusement and play. They were not serious about it. We need to become more serious about our religion. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a direct command. وَلَا تَكُونُوا وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا دِينَهُمْ هُزُوًا وَلَعِبًا وَغَرَّتْهُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا فَالْيَوْمَ نَنْسَاهُمْ كَمَا نَسُوا لِقَاءَ يَوْمِهِمْ هَذَا Do not be like those who have taken their deen, their deen, their way of life. When it was revealed to them, they took it as play and amusement. And they were drowned. They were drowned into this world. So as they forgot Allah, they became so attached to the materialistic world that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, today the day of judgment, we will forget you as you have forgotten us in the other world. Don't forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah forbid that we fall into that category. And that is why the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is important. Today we find, and I'm not painting everybody with the same brush, some of the learned have become wicked. Some worshippers have become deceivers. They pretend to be worshippers, but they are really deceivers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us beautifully, you're not following the Quran, you're not following the Sunnah, now what are you following? Didn't you see, says Allah, those who have taken their vain selves as their God, whatever their hawa says, that's my God, I will follow it. But put the Quran and the Sunnah aside. When it comes to Mawlud, we'll sing the celebrations, yes. But put the Quran and the Sunnah aside. We will follow what our mind says. 
And if our mind says this, that becomes our hawa and that becomes our ilah, our God. And that is the minor form of shirk that you are performing, is to follow your ilah, your vain self, and what goes through your mind. You will receive the knowledge from Allah, you will receive the Quran, you will receive the, the Torah, you will receive the Injil, you will receive all the divine knowledges from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah says in the same time you are still misguided. And Allah will seal your ears. Look at today. Look at today. Most of our young people in the time and day that they are living in, it's either headphones or they've got something in their ear listening to what? To the Quran? No. They're listening to music. They're listening to whatever they are watching. Whether it is YouTube or anything, anywhere else, they're watching something else. It's not the Quran. The melody of the Quran and the melody of the Adhan has been substituted by everything else but the Quran has been put aside. The beauty of the recitation of the Quran is no more impacting on us. It is, we, all we can listen to is, MashaAllah, what a beautiful recitation, but it doesn't impact on the heart. And Allah says, I have sealed their ears. I have sealed it. So they cannot hear the melody and the beauty of it anymore. I have sealed their tongues so they cannot speak about it anymore. I have sealed their hearts so there is no more impact on their hearts. This is when you start following your own whims and fancies in this world. You go after this world as if nothing else matters. Allah doesn't matter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Quran doesn't matter. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not matter. أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَىٰ You worship. Don't say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ You read it so many times in the, in the Surah Al-Fatiha, in your salah. How many of us mean it? إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ We would rather say that to the dollar, to the rand, to the pound, to the... We will say, this is what we worship. And we depend on it, not Allah. Yet you say, Iyaka na'bud wa Iyaka nasta'in. Only on Allah, only Allah do we worship and only Allah do we ask for help. When Allah says, wa ja'ala ala basarihi ghishawa, basarihi means the vision. You will have no more vision for you for the akhirah to be able to see what's going to happen to you the day of judgment. My dear brothers and sisters, every single second as we are here in the masjid, every single second of our lives, we're moving closer to accountability. I cannot say we're moving closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it is only Allah that is going to hold us accountable. And the moment we lose the idea of accountability, responsibility goes out by the window. We forget about our responsibilities. What is the condition of the Ummah today? Predicted by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, prophesied by the Prophet, peace be upon him, the Holy Quran is disregarded in all our affairs. Muslim and non-Muslim organizations are disregarding the Quran. People make a mockery of the deen. They argue over petty little things and they forget the fara'id. Worshipping the shaitan have become a common cause. Worshipping the shaitan have become a common cause. Shaitan plays an active role even within the very kernel and core of society that is our families. And he works with his entire, with entire army to destroy the family because he knows if I can destroy the family, I can destroy society. Disobedience to Allah, to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the common trend. The ignorant speaks while the learned are silent. The learned are silent. The ignorant are speaking. They have louder voices than us. We can use every single microphone and sound system, but the learned are silent when it comes to what is happening in the world. Truth and striving for it has evaporated. No longer around. When you are truthful, you get belied. When you're telling lies, when you're a known liar, you get believed. This is the current situation that we are living in. The hearts have become immune to the truth. Ears have turned away from it. And as I have said, musical instruments and music have replaced the melody, the beautiful 
of Quran and the recitation. Women want to be like men. Oh, yes. Vice versa. In their dress, in their behavior, even in their choice of life partners. Carnal passions. Carnal passions means our own fancies are being pursued. People take the ignorant as their leaders today. You may just have the gift of the gab and you can become a leader. You don't have to have no knowledge and understanding of the Holy Quran and the Sunnah and the Fiqh and the Usul al-Fiqh and the Ahadith. You don't have to have true knowledge about that. Just if they have the gift of the gab and you can become a leader today. And who's going to stop you? Because those who will appoint you do not know better. And that, unfortunately, the real understandable people of knowledge, they are not around. And when you start taking leaders of this kind, you will be misled. They will mislead you and they are misled themselves. How is it possible? Again, I ask you to hold on to the deen when this is the current situation. To hold on to that hot coal. Listen to the further prediction of the Prophet Do You know, we go through trials, tribulations. It hits us in our families. When something happens in your family, to yourself, to your children, we say calamity struck. Something happens to our property, calamity struck. You know what Sayyidina Umar used to say? If any calamity strikes you in your person or in your property, then say, Alhamdulillah, it did not strike my deen. That's the real calamity. When the deen is being harmed, when the deen is being overlooked, when the deen is being minimized, when the deen is not being practiced, that is calamity. And what are we doing about it? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِذَا عَظَمَتِ الدُّنْيَا نَزَعَتْ مِنْهَا هَيْبَةُ الْإِسْلَامِ وَإِذَا تُرِكَتْ أَمْرُ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَالنَّهِي عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ حَرُمَتْ بَرَكَةَ الْوَحِي If you start glorifying, magnifying, believing, working after the dunya, then what is happening to Islam? Allah takes away the izzat of Islam. Allah takes away the prestige. The status of Islam is gone. وَإِذَا تُرِكَتْ الْأَمْرُ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ When you start stop telling people what is right and what is wrong, that is the time when the barakah of the inspiration, the divine inspiration is taken out of the people. There's no more barakah in it. We can preach. We can give you the wahi all the time. But what impact does it have on the heart? What impact does it have on our lives? Today, my dear brothers and sisters, having a good character, doing what is morally right, being fair to your dealings has no more value anymore. Mischief is openly displayed. We indulge in what I call routine hypocrisy. Routine hypocrisy. We will talk something now and tomorrow we will say something different. We will say something to you to please you and we go to others and we say something to please them. That is a routine hypocrisy, my dear brothers and sisters. Lying, lying and stealing the order of the day. Why? To become advantageous to ourselves in order to benefit ourselves. But Prophet ﷺ warned again, إِذَا كَانَتْ أُمَرَاءُكُمْ خِيَارُكُمْ وَأَغْنِيَاءُكُمْ سُمَحَاءُكُمْ وَأُمُورُكُمْ شُورًا بَيْنَكُمْ فَظَهْرُ الْأَرْضِ خَيْرٌ مِّن بَطْنِهَا وَإِذَا كَانَتْ أُمَرَاءُكُمْ أَشْرَارُكُمْ وَأَغْنِيَاءُكُمْ بُخَلَاءُكُمْ وَأَمْرُكُمْ إِلَى نِسَائِكُمْ فَبَطْنُ الْأَرْضِ خَيْرٌ مِّن ظَهْرِهَا أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم When your leaders, your leaders are properly chosen with the proper criteria, with a proper understanding and knowledge, they are your leaders. And your leaders become generous and compassionate towards the affairs of people. And they look after their subjects. And your affairs are done on mutual consultation, not a dictatorship. Not you, everyone, one person can make a decision, everybody must follow. No. When it's done on shura, which is a principle in Islam, mutual consultation, 
then to be on the earth, to be alive, is better than to be inside the earth. But the other side of the coin, says the Prophet ﷺ, if your leaders are the worst people among you, you are to blame for them, for choosing them, for putting them in that leadership position, when they are the worst and they show no sympathy, no kindness, no generosity to their subjects, and you leave your affairs in the hands of women, then being inside the earth is better than being on top. Now, let me just clarify that point. My sisters might be very angry with me. Why are you saying something like this? It's not me. I'm not saying it. Rasulullah is saying it. And you know why? It is not about leaving the affairs into the hands of women. It is we have abandoned our leadership. We have abdicated our leadership as men. The sultan in the house is no more the longer the sultan in the house because the woman is earning more money than you. And she will tell you what I say, go. And you will agree with her. Because what she says, go, because she's earning more money. She's running the affairs of the home. So when you abandon your duty, your responsibility as men, then the woman will take over. And that is not good for our, 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 our communities. That is not good for the deen. We do not advocate dictatorship, whether inside our home or outside the home. We do not advocate oppression. We do not advocate gender-based violence. We do not advocate abandoning our religious duties. But what we are saying is, kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyati. You are all leaders. And you are responsible for your, for your subjects. You will be questioned about them the day of Qiyamah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When truth is removed, when truth is gone from amongst us, it is not the way of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. It's the way of the shaitan. We must not follow the way of shaitan or worship him. He is the enemy. I'm just going to pause there for one moment. Because you know the sheikh behind me is going to say, but sheikh, you know what, you, you actually support a team that has a shaitan on their sweater. I'm just going to stop there for one moment. Please, sheikh, you know, don't throw that in my face. I don't worship the shaitan, I, I support the team. But in any case, I know who sheikh support, don't worry. He makes no bones about it. <laughs> then I am saying to you, my dear brothers and sisters, I want to give you an example following the path of shaitan and subtly they're making us accept it and I'll tell you why when you have to go to a temple you start wearing black clothing and you must prostrate in front of the shaitan you know what I'm talking about it comes in a very subtle form where they want you to abandon your way of thinking and your way of life we're also told and the world has told us that South Africa has the finest constitution in the world. We have a Bill of Rights that guarantees what? Freedom from discrimination on the basis of what? Race, color, gender, sexual orientation. So, in the midst of our community that we have, the subtle invitation that's drawing us to accept the practicing of homosexuals, to accept the practices seeing of lesbianism, to accept this everything under the name of democracy, to accept the same-sex marriages that's been legalized. They are telling us subtly, you must accept these things because it is in the constitution your constitution is a Quran. That's a different constitution. You don't have to accept those things in the constitution. But that is the subtle invitation. Look at our organizations. Mushrooming up everywhere. Everywhere there's a madrasa, everywhere there's a mosque, everywhere there's, there's organizations. But tell me honestly, who of us stand up really against homosexual and lesbianism? Somewhere we are still sympathetic. They tell us, you must be sympathetic towards them. You must receive them. You must accept them. Despite their conduct being an abomination in the previous scriptures and in the Quran. i give you an example. 
Imam, hoe lang het ek nog om te praat, Imam? Hoe lang so? Imam sê, een minuut, ja Allah. Imam, ek is nog eens half ooit, ja nie. But in any case, you find a known gangster, known to the community, where he gets his money from and how he goes about his, his daily, daily activities. We know. And he walks in, and we're all sitting in a gathering, and you see how many people will get up and go and take his hand. Some of them will even kiss his hand. That's a subtle acceptance of what you are doing, sympathetic towards you, what you are doing. Nobody says anything. No, because he's got all his fancy clothes. He comes with his fancy car and his bodyguards, and you're going to shake his hand. Isn't that what happens today, my dear brothers and sisters? You find the alim, he might not be dressed with all the fancy clothes. He might come in a ragged thobe, but he has his dignity. He has his honor. He has the knowledge of the Quran, and nobody wants to look at him. There's the man over there, you know, the one who does all the crime. My dear brothers and sisters, I'm going to end off. Imam, just give me a minute or two, please. I'm, I would like to end off on this note. And Rasulullah also predicted the very current situation that we are living in today, and I'm not going to focus on the entire hadith. إذا ذهب الصدق ورفعت الأمانة واستخف بالصلاة وظهر اللواط والزنا وتشبه الرجال بالنساء والنساء بالرجال وفاض المال عند سفهاء فانتظروا أمر الله. When truth is gone, when the amana is removed from people, salah is no longer important, and homosexuality has become exposed, openly practiced. Zina, adultery and fornication is openly practiced and men want to be like women and women want to be like men. Prophet Sallallahu prediction, Prophet Sallallahu prophecy, 1400 years ago, وَفَاضَ الْمَالُ عِنْدَ السُّفَهَاءِ And you find those who have an abundance of wealth, they were actually ignorant people once upon a time. فَانْتَظِرُوا أَمْرَ اللَّهِ then you await the command of Allah. That means we are very close to Qiyamah. We are very close to the end of time. Look today. Look today what we find. We find a woman that wants to attire like men. Go walk around and you see, from their haircuts to their full attire, they want to be like a man. You find men want to be like women from their head to toe and even the way they speak in an effeminate way. You know? <laughs> but in any case, my dear brothers and sisters, we must understand how, how serious this is in the time that we are living in. Very serious. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa biggest fear was al-harj. Do you know what that is? That we're going to kill one another. Not the enemy killing us, we're going to kill one another. And let me on this note remind you, how many people have died in Yemen? How many people have died in Syria? At whose hands? At the hands of the enemy? No. Look at what is happening in Saudi Arabia. If I talk about Saudi Arabia, I talk about Mecca al Mukarramah, Medina al Munawwara, and I talk about a hallowed place. Look at the amount of advertising that's going about, khamr that's going on in that place. Look at the celebrations of Halloween. Halloween is supposed to take you out of light into darkness. When the Prophet ﷺ took us out of darkness into light. And yet, they pay for it, they condone it, they participate in it, and this is what's happening there. And I say again, if they want to ban me from Saudi Arabia, let them. But I cannot possibly condone the killing of another Muslim. I cannot condone what is happening in those hallowed places because that is my qibla. Where I stand and I face every single day, that is my qibla and I'm not going to be quiet and silent about what is happening there and all over the world by other, by other leaders, supposedly Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Rabbana zalamna anfusana. وَإِن لَّمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ O oh Allah, we have wronged ourselves. We have wronged ourselves. And if you do not forgive us, we will be of the losers. So we ask Allah to grant us to be of those who are successful, insha'Allah. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذَا دُعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ لِيَحْكُوَ بَيْنَهُمْ أَن يَقُولُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا When we are called to Allah and His Rasul, we say, سَمِعْنَا 
we heard, we listen, we hear, we obey, and we will execute, insha'Allah. May we be of those, insha'Allah. Just before Sheikh reads all the announcements, there's one very important announcement that I would like to make, if Sheikh allows me. As you heard, I was introduced as a Sheikh Murat, and I am no longer the Imam of the Zenith al Islam Masjid. I have resigned from there, but I will never resign from my duties to Allah, and I will never resign from my duties to my people. And then the other thing is, let us make dua for a very special woman. You know, sometimes you, talk, you look at me, you look at all the trustees, how hard they work for the masjid, and we praise them, but we forget those in the background who are, who are sacrificing, and that is the wives and the family. A person that used to frequent this masjid, but he was also on the board of trust there at the Zenith al-Islam, and that is Haji Musa, and Yusuf Musa, and you know, Musa Enterprises. His wife is very sick. She's on her last, she's in Johannesburg. Her daughter and her son has asked me to please make dua for their mother that Allah must grant her ease, insha'Allah, because the doctors has given her, and you know, the doctors have given me also a few days, but I'm still here, alhamdulillah. The doctors have given her a few days to live. Make dua that Allah make her passage easy. Thank you again to the Imam, the Board of Trustees of the Zinatul Islam Masjid, everybody who's involved here for having me, and everybody who came here today for listening to me in this hour of Juma, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all and protect us insha'Allah and those that are sick to grant them shifa insha'Allah those that passed on to grant them a high place in Jannah insha'Allah wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen jazakallah once again Imam sorry for taking a few minutes extra Barakallahu feek takbir Allahu Akbar walillahi alhamd he says shukran jazakallah khair and bayt ramakasi to Shaykh Muhammad Murad for a very soul stirring nasiha on the prophecies of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. Amen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant Sheikh complete shifa. Because Sheikh has not been too well. He is now four operations later. And as he said in his own words, turned around from death's door. May Allah spare you for many more good years that you can continue to be an ambassador for Islam. Amen, Ya Rabbil Alamin. Shukran, Sheikh, and you are part of Masjid Al-Quds, and we hope to have you more often here. Now that you are free spirit, freelancer, Masjid Al-Quds is open for you, inshallah. Free agent also gives me time to, to rest one week, and then we can have Sheikh on. Just a few announcements. When you leave or exit the Masjid, you will find that the organization called Masjid Love it's outside, they're having a table outside. Masjid Love is doing extremely wonderful work for uh, the welfare of the masajid and the imams. As you exit, inshallah, please donate generously to them, inshallah. We have also been asked to make dua shifa for Abdul Qadir Muhammad from Durban, as well as for Azad Sheikh also from Durban, both brothers are not too well, and all sick people at home in the hospital, Allah grant them shifa and kamila. Amin ya rabbal alameen. We also make dua for Zuleikha Isaacs from Dorian Road, who passed away in the week. A janaza was on Monday or Tuesday. She was one of our Tuesday morning housewife forum members. May Allah grant and all deceased Jannah to Firdaus. Amin ya rabbal alameen. And then, of course, you've got the news of the attempted assassination of Prime Minister Imran Khan, the ousted Prime Minister of, of Pakistan, Imran Khan. Alhamdulillah, he survived the assassination attempt, but he has been injured. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those who, had, who died in the process, who were his supporters and protected him, Allah grant them maghfirah and jannah, amin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant Imran Khan and all the supporters of him who got injured in the event, Allah grant them full and speedy recovery. And my personal prayer is that Allah must grant Imran Khan to make a comeback and retake and take over the, premier, the Prime Ministership of Pakistan once again. And I would love you to say, Amin. Amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah bring peace in that land of turmoil there. And then, of course, the inquest into the brutal death and murder of a shaheed Imam Abdullah Harun in 1969 in the prison and the cells of apartheid. The inquest will be taking place, inshallah, 
to look more into detail and to bring justice to the situation on Monday the 7th of November till the 18th of November and the whole community has been asked to give your full support in whichever way you can and even if you can attend the inquest inshallah to be present there to show your full support that we can get justice for that particular incident inshallah and of course last but not least this morning another sad event the kidnapping taking place of five-year-old abira dekta here in gatesville right around the corner here by uh, Amber Court, just around the corner here of the high school opposite the road, five-year-old Abira was kidnapped. We make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant a safe return to her family and keep her safe and salamat. And I once again, as I always do, appeal to parents and grandparents, please stay alert. Don't let your little children walk all alone to school or to the shop. There's some serious sharks, perverted sharks out there who are preying on our children, catching them, abducting them, kidnapping them, and many, many families never see their children ever again in their lives. For those little children and individuals who have been kidnapped and abducted, wallahi, they in our sincere to us. That Allah protect them, Allah keep them in His Rahmah, and Allah keep them and grant them that they return safe to their families. But we are getting into sick, crazy days, days of festivities, and these things are going to be on the increase. Please take care of your innocent grandchildren and your innocent little children. May Allah protect us all. Amin. Ya Rabbal Alameen. Wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Can I first and foremost ask this row to kindly step forward? Wherever you see a space in front of you, that space is yours. Just go let my plate talk and Allah. The rest, come forward please. And then the following, come forward. And then everyone else, take a step forward please. Can I ask you for your cooperation that the moment the Imam gets off from the mimba, we can start the Salah immediately. Kanala Bruce. Kanala, as a belief, Minfatlik, Mulweni, please come forward. Please, people, give me cooperation. Just get up, step forward where you see. I see a lot of gaps in between. Please don't be so complacent. Just step forward. Wherever you see a space in front of yours, that space is rightfully yours. Shukran, Jazakallah Khair, and Baya Baya Tramakase. Shadu Allah 
إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمسلكين رب احتم لنا بالحيل برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين 
والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلاح حيا على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله حيا الله محمد رسول الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فيا عباد الله لقد قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سيأتي زمان الصابر على دينه كالقابض على الجبر أو كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد عذب الله من الشيطان الرجيم إنما كان قول المؤمنين إذا دعوا إلى الله ورسوله ليحكم بينهم أي يقولوا سمعنا وأطعنا وأولئك هم المفلحون ومن يطع الله ورسوله ويخشى الله ويتقه فأولئك هم الفائزون جعلني الله وإياكم من القرآن الكريم وتقبل مني ومنكم تلاوته إنه تعالى جواد كريم ملك بر الرؤوف الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم وزن وتوانم ودفد وبارك زلالك وكمالك على زين عبادك وأشرف نبادك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وصحبه وسلم سلم ورضي الله تبارك وتعالى عن كل صحابة أجمعين الحمد لله كما يجب علينا من حمده وتعظيمه ونشكره سبحانه على إحسانه وإنعامه وتكريمه ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئة أعمالنا ومن نزغات الشيطان وتوهيمه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله سبحانه وتعالى وأطيعوه فإن طاعته أقوم وأقوى وتزودوا فإن خير الزاد التقوى ثم اعلموا أن الله سبحانه وتعالى قد قال في كتابه العزيز إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد صاحب الوجه الأنور والجبين الأزهر وارض اللهم عن أصحابي أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر أصحاب نبيك أجمعين وعن التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم بمنك وكرمك ورحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين واجعل هذا البلد آمنا مطمئنا وسائر بلاد المسلمين اللهم آمنا في أوطاننا واصلح أئمتنا وولاة أمورنا واجعل ولايتنا في من خافك واتقاك واتبع رضاك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا الصلاة حيا الفلاح 
قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله استو اعتدلوا straighten the lines please for the gaps الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين لا إكراه في الدين قد تبين الرشد من الغي فمن يكفر بالطاغوت ويؤمن بالله فقد استمسك بالعروة الوثقى لا انفصام لها والله سميع عليم الله ولي الذين آمنوا يخرجهم من الظلمات إلى النور والذين كفروا أولياؤهم الطاغوت يخرجونهم من النور إلى الظلمات أولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر سبحان الله الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله نستغفر الله نستغفر الله نستغفر الله العظيم التواب الرحيم الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم ونتوب إليك 
ونسلك توبة ومغفرة إنه هو التواب الرحيم اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تباركت ربنا وتعاليت يا ذا الجلال والإكرام سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم واهدنا ووفقنا إلى الحق وإلى طريق مستقيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين As temperatures drop and winter grips the country, the less fortunate in South Africa are preparing for the harsh realities that this season brings. Africa Muslims agencies on the ground distributing blankets, clothing and other essentials to thousands across the country. Sponsor a winter warmth pack for 280 rands to provide blankets, winter clothing and candles to families in need. Donate via Africa Muslims agency and help us to spread warmth this winter. Africa Muslims agency commemorating 35 years of empowering, educating, inspiring.